Hey guys, it's Sam, and this is my spoiler-free review for Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This video will be spoiler-free for this book, but not for the first book, Gideon the Ninth. So I've done a review for that as well. I will link that on the screen. This is the second book in the Locked Tomb trilogy, which is now going to be a four-book series, was originally going to be a trilogy. I'm very excited it's going to be four books. And this takes place kind of directly after the events of Gideon. Uh, it jumps around in sort of time a little bit, uh, so it's kind of unclear. The thing about this book is that for the uh, first 75% of the book, you don't know what's happening. And that is intentional. But there's just a lot of like time jumps, what's happening when, what's going on, and it's very confusing with good payoff. But if you did not like Gideon and you're watching this to be like, should I read this or not? If you didn't like Gideon or you like weren't sure about Gideon or you're confused about Gideon, you're gonna be confused as hell in this book because I wasn't really confused by Gideon and I w was lost through most of this, but I trusted it. I trusted the process. But if you were a little bit like on the fence, I just, besties, I wouldn't. But I really enjoyed this. Um, so let's get into my thoughts about it. First off, there are triggers in here for all the same stuff as Gideon. All of the blood, gore, bones, body horror, everywhere. Um, there's also themes of possession that was a little bit in the first book as well. And then there is some like is it necrophilia? Is it not? Not with our main characters or anything. Um, some like, we're not really sure what's going on, but just know that there's potentially some like icky sort of stuff there, but we're not really sure. Also, there's necromancers. It's very unclear, okay? But that's a very small part, not like a main theme or anything. So first off, I'm talk about the world building. This definitely expands on the world and sort of like the lore of the world. This is following much more of like what's going on with like the lectors and like like lecterhood, the emperor and his sort of like godhood and all of his sort of like saints um, and what that means for sort of like the religion and the political system and the ramifications of having beat death in some ways and some of that stuff. So that's very like cerebral in a lot of ways, um, very interesting discussions kind of going on along with fun bone stuff, tons of necromancer stuff, just a lot of like wacky wacky fun things uh and like i said most of this is much more just like sort of like aesthetics and what is happening for a lot of it which again ties up really well uh in the end as far as our characters this is following harrow so in our first book we're in gideon's perspective in this book we're in harrow's perspective and i dug that because we get a lot more of like who is Hera? What's going on? Uh, Hera is also an uh, unreliable narrator um, for a number of different reasons, but the main one which is revealed in Gideon is that she is maybe like a little mentally unstable. She calls herself insane. I, th that's, who knows what exactly is going on, but there's things where it's like, is she seeing things, is she not? So that adds an interesting element to what's going on. Then we have all of these other like lectors um, and the like the dynamics there that are very like interesting and still that same level of humor, not quite as um, in your face as Gideon's humor is, I would say, uh, but still definitely there. And just like these moments of like humor and just sarcasm, like dry wit against some of the weirdness of like the bone magic stuff. <laughs> Lastly, I'll mention the plot. Like I said, most of it is very, very convoluted and you're like not really sure what's going on, but you know there's an intention behind that. Um, and the last 20% and the way that that wraps up, really good, really solid, I feel is worth it. Not everyone probably will feel that way. I think this series is incredibly polarizing and I totally understand why. I really dig it. I like the vibes, I like the weirdness, um, I like the sci-fi fantasy, I like the bone stuff, I like the weird, like, are these people in love, are they not? I don't really know, most of the time. Um, so I just, I, I really like it. Um, very excited for the rest of the books in the series and where this is going. It's a wild ride. I will not even try to predict uh, what is all going on. I did give this 4.5 out of 5 stars, which is the same rating that I gave Gideon, but I would say I enjoyed Gideon slightly more, mostly because I wasn't confused. Um, I know I was confused for good reason, uh, but I kind of docked at that little like half star um, because of that reason. I will say maybe I might bump Gideon up to a 5 in retrospect because I do think it probably is a 5 star book um, for me. But yeah, 4.5 stars and I will be doing a gush about this so I will have a spoilery gush if you have read this book and you want to hear more of my in-depth thoughts about some of the things that happens. Since I can't talk too much about that in this video, so I'll link that on the screen. So comment below let me know what you thought of Harold the Ninth. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!